All right, good day. This is Grant Adam reporting to you live from Twims up in, what is this, Kloof? Everton. Everton, Everton. So I'm Justin Barnes. I'm the manufacturing ambassador of Twims. Um, I was the inaugural executive director for the first four years. Uh, I represent uh, Twims and various manufacturing platforms. And I'm also responsible for a couple of the uh, core deliverables of the institute. I'm also an associate professor at the Gordon Institute of Business Science, which is our academic partner at Twims. I've had an incredible look at the property where Twins is situated. Magnificent. It's like a boutique hotel. That's right. Incredible environment to operate in. Those observations are important because we chose the site for that very reason. Um, we were looking for a site for the campus and we wanted a site that came with a little bit of historical provenance and uh, academia carries the weight of history with it. And so we found this site, which was a boutique hotel, and uh, we converted it into uh, an academic institution. We actually thought it was a bit like Hogwarts when we arrived. It's got the beautiful facade when you, uh, when you enter through the big gates. And we were also struck by the, the beautiful water pond on entry, which of course has a leaping horse in it. And Toyota South Africa, before it became Toyota, part of Toyota Japan, and was an independent company, the leaping horse was the Toyota South Africa Science. So the fact that this institute is supported by Toyota and the Vessels family, um, and the Vessels family being the founders of Toyota South Africa before they sold to uh, Toyota Motor Corporation, for us it was a perfect sort of symmetry of a whole lot of things that sort of suggested this was the right site to build the, the institute. I, I reckon it's incredible. I did notice the horses when yeah. I came in and said, wow, look at that. So today we're here to, to talk about an incredible project that you have here with Interims, which is the Sandbox. Yep. So you're going to have to tell me about it because okay. I'm excited about it. I want everybody yeah. to know about it. So what's important, this is a business school, right? So our focus is on supporting the development of management skills. And, but managers come from a variety of different backgrounds. Sometimes they're engineers, sometimes they're accountants, and often they arrived in a managerial position with some obscure qualification. It doesn't matter. The challenge is that when you're responsible for a manufacturing organization, you're responsible for making decisions on what to invest in invest in your people, you invest in your productive assets, your equipment, you invest in your buildings, your surrounds, you invest in your materials, your material science. There's a whole range of investments, decisions that need to be made by individuals. When a technology environment is stable, one can accumulate the knowledge tacitly, so through experience, you'll arrive at a certain position where you're responsible, you've got a big spend, and you can work out what needs to be done. And then in 2023, as I'm speaking to you now, there's this noise around Industry 4.0. And it's not just noise. Competitors are bringing product out cheaper, with more bells and whistles, producing them quicker than before, with shorter uh, lead times, ever shorter lead times for product development. And so there's this pressure on adapting manufacturing models for this new digital age. So what the hell does that mean? Now think about it. In a manufacturing environment, your senior managers are senior. They're not just senior in terms of their knowledge and in terms of their experience, they tend to be senior in terms of age. And so one of the big uh, challenges we identified when we set up TWIMS is how do we bring into a management space, so we're not a technology center, but how do we bring into a management school a space that would be comfortable for managers to engage technology in? And the concept we came up with is this management sandbox. I had the privilege of visiting uh, a few technology centers around the world when we were establishing uh, TWIMS. Unfortunately, uh, they had billions of rands to spend, and we didn't. But we took the concepts of what they were doing, and often they were at the forefront of developing technology. We realized we don't have to be at the forefront of developing technology, we have to be at the forefront of understanding the technology. They can pay the heavy school fees, we can pay the light school fees. And so we took those learnings and we incorporated them into a management sandbox at, at TWIMS. So the question is, why a sandbox? You know, it's a weird term. Yeah. Well, we didn't think so, because our logic is that the biggest challenge facing senior managers in manufacturing today is to take all of that experience that they've got from the past and enrich it with a childlike inquisitiveness and a passion for the entirely new and the abstract digital technologies, digitalized business models, 3D printing, uh, industrial IoT, um, 
the move towards artificial intelligence, machine learning, visual recognition technology, augmented reality, digital twins, I can go on and on. There are so many of these technologies and they're all built around the ubiquitous availability of data and incredibly powerful computing, which allows us now to do things in manufacturing that we could never do before. And so we've incorporated all of that into the sandbox in order to give senior managers a space to go and play. And why do we call it a sandbox? Well, the argument is kids learn in a sandbox so well because at a young age you have no ego. The biggest problem we have is that once we're senior and we've established our sort of position in a pecking order with a whole bunch of knowledge and we hold a senior position, we revere that knowledge, right? Because that's the thing that made us where we are. Challenge then is you tend to be quite difficult uh, in relation to engaging with new technology. So the sandbox is essentially a safe space at a management institute for senior managers to come along and just play with the new technologies. Whatever their background, if they're serious engineers, great. If they're accountants who are running manufacturing operations, we won't hold it against them. They can, uh, they can come and learn the, uh, learn the technology, or at least be exposed to the, te maybe I shouldn't say learn. They need to be exposed to the technology to drive that inquisitiveness. Because at the end of the day, they, the expectation is they play with these technologies, they get excited about these technologies, they go away and they're ready to put some money on the table to say, you know what, maybe we should spend a couple of hundred thousand rand on a reasonable 3D printer. Maybe we should get one of our young uh, engineers to go and play with an uh, artificial intelligence algorithm and go and build it to see if we can optimize a process in a plant. Maybe we should be looking at putting sensors on different machines to see if we can improve the reliability of the equipment uh, using big data analytics. There's all ranges of things that need to be done and this is meant to be like a catalyst for change in the manufacturing space. Okay, that's, that's a pretty comprehensive answer. So now the process, now how do, how do you get involved with this program? How does one do that? So we run formal academic courses here. So we've got the uh, MBA program and the, we have a future manufacturing elective, which uh, I co-teach with uh, Malika Koja, uh, Dr. Malika Koja, who is a PhD engineer. I'm a PhD development economist, so when it comes to technology, I'm a bit dangerous. Uh, she's not. So Malika and I teach the course. I teach on the strategy side. Malika teaches on the, on the technology side. And then what we've done is we've taken that uh, MBA elective and we've uh, developed a suite of short courses that we uh, deliver for managers on, and executives on a short uh, course uh, basis. So. We then go through and teach these technologies. We teach the strategies of engaging with these technologies in businesses and uh, how businesses can use these technologies to advance their competitiveness and reposition themselves in markets. Um, and then we expose them to the technologies through the sandbox. But we also have the ability for firms to come and experience the sandbox under a structured mm. learning process, which is why Dale uh, Wilson is important because Dale is our resident technician responsible for the, um, for the uh, sandbox and understands how our industrial IoT production line works, the 3D printing works, and all of the associated visual recognition technology that we have, the augmented reality, the digital twin that we have of our, of our facility, so that we can break the ice. So I've probably taught the future manufacturing course six times now over the last, maybe even more, maybe eight times over the last couple of years. I always ask the question, how many people in this room have put on a VR headset and understand how far uh, visual, uh, virtual reality uh, has, has advanced? Who's experienced a digital twin or even experienced this metaverse? And I've never had more than maybe four people out of 30 say that they have. And I find that quite striking because um, this is going to be a profound game changer in, in manufacturing. Things like digital twins allow you to rapid prototype. They allow you to run your production line digitally before you run it physically to work out what may fail in your production processes uh, and whether the production is efficiently laid out or not. So these are all things that firms need to be preparing for and yet we never have more than maybe four out of 30, as I said, often no one has mm. actually put in a VR headset. The question I pose is, well, how do you engage with and transition to these technologies when appropriately, because sometimes it's not now, sometimes it's in three or four years only, but if you haven't yet engaged, when do you know when the right time is to, to strategically move? And the reality is there's very little engagement with these, these technologies in a South African context. You mentioned in our 
conversation prior to this interview of an experience you had in Joburg where people were talking the hypothetical as yeah. opposed to... So yeah, that. so that's important. So last week I had the privilege of teaching in Johannesburg on a company-specific course on future manufacturing. And it was a, I really enjoyed it, but I left the day feeling a little bit empty because I spoke in the abstract. Everybody was excited and then I carried on talking and some remained excited and some I could see I was starting to lose. When I do that on this campus, that doesn't happen. Why? Because you explore these areas, you take them off to the, uh, to the sandbox, put them in Dale's hands for, uh, for half an hour, 45 minutes, get them to actually experience the technology, getting people to think about what it means for business. Because we often think of technology as if the technology was sacrosanct. The technology is everything. The technology is not everything. It's how do you monetize it? How do you create value in a marketplace? And that means bringing people, uh, bringing uh, machinery, bringing technology together in a way that creates value for a market. And what we're trying to do is to get people to understand where this technology leg may fit and how we can bring it together. The sandbox is critical because it allows one to visualize it. It allows one to experience it. And most importantly, it allows one to de-fetishize it. Going back to the land sandbox, I just love it. But now, the future. Yeah. Twims. Yeah. Sandbox the future, where does that go? So we're very excited at TWIMS because TWIMS, uh, the campus is being expanded. Uh, we've got a major investment. We've bought the land adjacent to TWIMS. We're adding 25,000 square meters of property. So mm. the campus is going to be uh, three times its size shortly, which is going to allow us to expand the management sandbox. What we keen on doing in the management sandbox is essentially creating a sort of disruptive innovation space within the sandbox. So we have the technology that we've got, but we want to build into the sandbox itself an innovation space where management teams can come and it's a highly creative um, space with technology that can be played with, it can be experimented with, but that is really meant to break the ice so that disruptive thinking can take place in the organizations. So we are going to expand that uh, sandbox by about 300% as well, make it into a much bigger facility with more a brainstorming space situated in the sandbox. Um, and we would, we would really in the future like to get smaller firms, especially to have a space that they could use to embrace these new technologies in order to advance their competitiveness. Because ultimately, the fundamental challenge of being a leader in a, an organization is advancing that business's competitiveness. And advancing competitiveness is simple. Finding new things to do that add value to the customer and doing the thing that you're doing a lot more effectively. It's not, it's not much more complicated than that. And what that sandbox is about is how do you use technology to do those two things? How do you use technology to do what you're doing more effectively and how do you use technology to create entirely new types of value for markets in order to win greater market share and grow your aggregates of, of output? <laughs>